parents out of money, Chinese students face funding cutoff. How China makes major announcement, local governments to purchase unsold housing. Brawl breaks out at Jilin Police Academy, over 20 students involved in dormitory fight. Crackdown incoming. Major announcement from Chinese social media platforms. China's BYD launches hybrid pickup in Mexico as U.S. hikes EV tariffs. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Parents out of money, Chinese students face funding cutoff. China's slowing economy, weak consumer demand, and housing market crisis are hitting small businesses and middle-class incomes hard. This economic strain is also impacting Chinese students abroad, especially in the U.S. and U.K., with many no longer able to depend on their parents for tuition and living expenses. As reported by CNBC, Xiao Zhang, a 24-year-old design student in Alabama, had her educational expenses covered by her parents until they encountered financial difficulties last October. Her father, having lost a significant amount of money in pharmaceutical investments during the pandemic, could no longer support her and even offered to pay for her flight back to China. At that point, Zhang could only cover her rent for three more months and one more semester's tuition. Faced with these financial challenges, Zhang realized she would need to work to continue her studies. She expressed, I didn't have time to feel sad, I needed to earn money fast for my tuition and rent. After a month of job hunting, she secured a temporary job in another state and started working daily from 7 a.m. Despite the exhaustion and lack of time for her studies, Zhang was able to earn enough to pay for the next semester. Zhang's story is increasingly common as China's economy remains sluggish. Bloomberg has spoken to many Chinese students facing similar challenges due to their parents' financial woes at home, struggling with the high cost of foreign tuition. Emily Xiong's story is similar, she had to consider cheaper alternatives like Malaysia despite preferring the UK, as her family could no longer afford her education. According to Cheers You, an educational consultancy in New York, before the pandemic, Chinese students seldom faced financial barriers to studying abroad. However, recently, 10% of the students they counsel have had to alter their plans due to a lack of funds. Economists say these difficulties underscore the fragility of China's middle class, which has little to fall back on during economic downturns. Many families have been lulled into a false sense of security by years of rapid growth, lacking the diversified investments that wealthier families might have. In this context, a tag study abroad funding cutoff had become a trending topic on Chinese social media, especially as garnered over 4.6 million views on Xia Hongshu, a Chinese platform similar to Instagram, since last year, reflecting the growing number of Chinese students turning to social media for advice and support as their family fortunes dwindle. The CCP has yet to address a multi-year housing crisis that has tied up 70% of family assets, leaving many households vulnerable and affecting their children studying overseas. How China Makes Major Announcement, Local Governments to Purchase Unsold Housing China's real estate sector is struggling under a mountain of bad debt, largely due to collusion between government officials and businesses. According to a report from Bloomberg on May 15, insiders reveal that the Chinese government is considering a massive and ambitious bailout plan, where local governments would buy up millions of unsold homes to save the beleaguered market. It could take months to finalize if approved. The state council is gathering input from various provinces and agencies. While the government has dabbled in smaller pilot projects to manage excess inventory through state funds, this new initiative would be on a much larger scale. The plan also involves local state-owned enterprises, which would use state bank loans to buy large numbers of unsold homes at a discount from developers in distress, converting these into affordable housing. China's Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development hasn't commented on these developments. Bloomberg also notes that this move could signal a significant shift in China's economic strategy. This year, the collapse in home sales, down 47% in just four months, has left the unsold housing stock at an eight-year high, exacerbating the crisis and threatening millions with unemployment or reduced earnings. Investors are awaiting further details from the government, especially after the Chinese Communist Party's recent pledge to find new solutions to the housing crisis. Following this announcement, 
the Bloomberg Track China Real Estate Index has climbed 14 percent. Earlier this year, the People's Bank of China launched a 100 billion yuan, about 13.9 billion US dollars, initiative to help eight cities buy unsold properties for low-rent projects. But as of March, only a fraction of the intended loans had been issued, reflecting the bank's and local government's reluctance. Several major cities, including Hangzhou, have recently scrapped buying restrictions to boost the market. Moreover, over 50 Chinese cities have launched trade-in policies for housing, but only a handful involve government-supported buyback schemes. A recent Nikkei Asia column highlighted that the crisis is now reaching the upper echelons of Chinese politics, with Evergrande seen as the epicenter. Should Evergrande collapse, it might leave the public footing the bill for a slew of bad loans. Brawl breaks out at Jilin Police Academy, over 20 students involved in dormitory fight. On May 14, a brawl involving over 20 students at the Jilin Judicial Police Officers Vocational College sparked widespread outrage after a video quickly went viral on Weibo and Douyin. The videos showed some people being beaten and lying injured on the floor, causing chaos. In the video, one who was beaten wore a gray shirt, with Police Academy clearly marked. The video's caption described the scene as campus bullying and assault at Changchun City's Jilin Judicial Police Officers Vocational College, with multiple injuries. Responding to the incident on May 13, the college told the New Yellow River that they were investigating and would soon issue a formal statement. Meanwhile, a Douyin user with apparent ties to the affected students remarked, My nephew was among those attacked, and the matter is still unresolved. A Weibo user shared findings on May 13 about the career prospects for graduates of the college. In 2023, one employer offered auxiliary police positions requiring extensive screening and testing, with a starting salary of just 2,500 yuan, about 346 US dollars and 40 cents, per month before deductions, a far cry from the school's former glory days. Public records indicate that Jilin Judicial Police Officers Vocational College, approved by the Jilin Provincial Government and registered with China's Ministry of Education, offers a three-year vocational program in policing. The college currently has 5,568 associate degree students and 2,360 undergraduates in a collaborative program with Jilin University's law school. The incident involving more than 20 students in a campus brawl at the college has ignited a flurry of online debates. Commenting on the incident, a netizen from Guangdong criticized the college's response time, questioning, the assault occurred on the 2nd, and by the 14th, the school staff were still uninformed? What kind of police academy is this, where an incident remains unresolved for over 10 days? What are they teaching if they can't solve a case right under their noses? Douyin comments from Jilin residents included sharp critiques such as, if this isn't a crime, then what is? What hope is there for the public if these are the types of individuals becoming officers? The thought of these students entering the judicial system is a nightmare for ordinary citizens and the wrongfully accused. Will they be law enforcers or lawbreakers once they're in uniform? Comments about the broader implications included, it's horrifying to see them knowingly break the law and corruption and wrongdoing are rampant across all sectors. Incidents of police officers brawling in public are not uncommon in China. For instance, a recent altercation between two traffic officers in Tianjin, who exchanged blows in full view of the public, prompted sarcastic comments about the eroding public trust in law enforcement. Another disturbing scene unfolded in 2023 when police from Zhejiang, Jiangxi, and Huangmei, Hubei, violently clashed over regional border controls, leading to overturned vehicles and public spectacles, with one commenter sarcastically noting, socialist iron fists beating socialist iron fists. Crackdown incoming Major announcement from Chinese social media platforms China's leading social media platforms, including Tencent, Douyin, Kuaishou, Weibo, Bilibili, and Xia Hongshu today announced a stringent crackdown on content that promotes flaunting wealth and worshipping money. This crackdown targets inappropriate displays of luxury homes, high-end cars, cash, and luxury items, and includes boasting about being from a wealthy family or a nouveau riche. Such content is subject to removal, and accounts may be banned. 
Doane addressed 4,701 posts that promoted negative values from May 1 to 7, suspending 11 accounts. Zia Hongshu removed 4,273 inappropriate posts and shut down 383 accounts over the past two weeks, while Weibo acted against over 1,100 posts, issuing temporary or permanent bans to 27 accounts. A notable case on Zia Hongshu involved a user who boasted about offering support to those who couldn't earn 30,000 yuan, about 4,157 US dollars, a month showcasing luxury cars to attract viewers and drive traffic to external sites. This behavior, deemed to promote harmful values and potential fraud, led to the account being banned. Doane reported cases of users displaying large amounts of cash or using them in profile pictures, indicating possible misuse of currency. There were also instances of miners dressed in expensive brands, emphasizing the price, which promoted unhealthy values. Weibo is ramping up efforts against content that glorifies luxury living through sensational marketing, including showcasing extravagant items or emphasizing one's wealthy background and elite social circles. This content often promotes exaggerated or false narratives of self-made success and financial independence. Public records indicate that since 2021, the Chinese government has consistently focused on curbing displays of wealth and materialistic behaviors in its national internet purification initiatives, aiming to reform online culture and values. China's BYD launches hybrid pickup in Mexico as U.S. hikes EV tariffs. On Tuesday, May 14, Chinese automaker BYD introduced the Shark, a mid-size hybrid electric pickup truck, in Mexico. This launch marks BYD's first product release outside of China, targeting North American competitors like Ford, General Motors, and Toyota, though it is currently only available in Mexico. BYD's Chief of Americas, Stella Lee, highlighted Mexico as the launch location due to its rapidly growing pickup truck market. The unveiling occurred just hours after U.S. President Joe Biden announced significant tariff increases on various Chinese imports, including a quadrupling of duties on Chinese EVs to over 100 percent, citing unfair competitive practices. Despite these developments, U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai indicated that the U.S. might consider tariffs on imports from Mexico as well. In a Reuters interview post-event, Ms. Lee stated that the new U.S. tariffs would not affect BYD's strategy as the company does not plan to enter the U.S. market and is focusing on building a plant in Mexico for local and other markets, excluding the U.S. She revealed that BYD is finalizing the location for a new Mexican plant, expected to produce 150,000 vehicles annually and be operational in two to three years, with a decision due by year-end after deeper discussions. The presence of Chinese automakers in Mexico has surged since 2017, capturing a significant market share, with one in every 10 cars sold last year being from a Chinese brand. This growth occurs despite the U.S. pressuring Mexico to keep Chinese automakers at bay by withholding incentives like low-cost public land or tax breaks for EV production. Ms. Lee noted that while BYD has not yet negotiated incentives with Mexico's federal government due to the upcoming elections, she expects competitive offers from both state and federal levels to attract BYD's investment, which promises substantial local technological and employment benefits. The Shark will compete directly with compact and medium-sized trucks like the Toyota Tacoma and Ford Ranger in Mexico. It is priced higher than most models of these competitors, starting at around $53,443 for the Shark GL and around $57,589 for the Shark GS. According to the brochure, the Shark boasts a range of up to 100 kilometers, about 62 miles, in EV mode and 840 kilometers using hybrid methods, with a fuel consumption of 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers about 31.4 miles per gallon. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.